Hey everyone, I'm Melissa from Knitting the Stash, and this is a tutorial about how to use an asymmetrical sock blank to make two really interesting socks. Now, a lot of sock blanks, uh, you can buy them undyed, and in that case, you wouldn't have to worry about how you're going to work them up. But in a lot of cases, sock blanks will come dyed either asymmetrically or symmetrically. If they're dyed symmetrically, it's a little bit easier to decide how to use them to create two identical pairs of socks. Sometimes they're going to come dyed asymmetrically though, and in that case you have to think about how you're going to use the dye on the sock blank and if you're going to do any dividing up to make sure that your sock pair comes out different and asymmetrical but also really interestingly connected to each other. So in this case, I have a sock blank that was dyed up by Megan Morell of Old Crow Art Yarns. And you can see she's done a beautiful job of going from an almost white or very uh, light, light blue on this end through some blues into some really fun splotchy stuff. I think this one was called Jaws, maybe. <laughs> you can tell. A little ocean, a little blood, <laughs> and you have the picture, the full picture. Uh, and it is a single sock blank, so on each end, this is the main end over here, when you pull it off you get a single strand of yarn coming off the end. Some sock blanks are double and those are a little bit easier to knit a symmetrical pair of socks with because you have two strands and you just knit from those two strands. So let's talk about how we're going to work with this particular blank given the asymmetrical nature. Uh, as you can see here, kind of, not quite fully on this camera, the midline for this blank is about right here. So most of the blue is on one side and then you have the splotchy bit all the way down to the red on the other side. Now you could knit this splotchy bit as your cuff for both of them and then move down the leg on one side and move down the leg on the other side because that would get you about the same amount on either side. You'd be left with this lighter zone which would look great on one of the socks, the one that had this blue, but might look a little bit uh, strange as a contrast for the sock that had mostly the red. I think it's a nice idea though, and, and plus the toe end of your sock, it's sitting in your, in your shoe. Uh, the other way you could do it is to actually follow the midline. One sock would be blue ocean color, the other would be the uh, horrible accident that happened in this Jaws sock, sock blank. One of the other things you could do is take the end part of the uh, sock blank here that's much more of a neutral kind of lighter very light blue almost into a cream color and separate that that part out during your skeining process or just after when you're separating out for your socks dividing for your socks and use this as your contrast for your heels and toes uh, then you know ahead of time what it's going to be used for and that leaves you with the rest of the blank for working on your socks. And in that case, what I'd like to do is use this up here for the cuffs. And as I said, I'm gonna to try to knit this way down each side so that one sock ends up being majority blue and one sock ends up majority wet red. And I'll use this end portion for my contrasting heels and toes. So let's get this process started and I'll show you how I'm gonna divide up the blank. So here's another visual representation of the sock blank so that you can see how I uh, decided to do the winding up and the separation. This is the red side. This is that cool variegated area in the middle. This is the blue side. And this is the area that I decided to keep for uh, the contrasting cuffs and toes. Remember, it's the lighter blue or the cream color. Now, the reason I did that is because the blue section is, is a little bit disproportionate to the red section. The halfway point on the sock blank happens right about here, and it doesn't happen right where I want it to, which is right in between this variegated coolness. So what I did is took a measurement of the entire skein's weight, and then I started winding off from this end. This was the end that was finished last, so it's the easiest to wind off of. So I wound off uh, into a center pole ball on my ball winder, all the way up to the halfway point that I had planned, and I had marked it with a removable safety pin. Once I got to that point, I separated my yarn, gave it a little snip, and I measured the rest of my sock blank along with the uh, part that I had already caked up. Now the cake ended up being 1.45 ounces. So once I started winding this portion of the blank, I knew I wanted to get to 1.45 ounces as well to keep them equal. Whatever was left over, which ended up being the 0.6 ounces, would be divided for the cuffs and toes of both socks. So let me show you what the yarn actually looks like. 
First we have the red half, and you can see the it's a center pole ball, and I'm going to begin, I usually use my center pole ball, uh, I'm going to begin with that cool variegated area that we saw just about at the center of the sock blank, and then the rest of the sock body will be red. My blue area, same thing. I've got my variegated cuff action on the center and the blue on the outside. And then both of them have their contrasting toes and heels mini skein here that goes with them. Now you'll see that this yarn is still very, very kinky, even after going through the ball winding process a couple of times. So it needs to be skeined up and then washed and dried so that it will be ready for knitting. So that's what I'm on to next. So after all of my planning and washing and knitting, I'm happy to show you the result of the socks that were knit using that asymmetrical sock blank. And I think you'll be happy to see how symmetrical they actually are. You can see that if I place them next to each other, even the cuff length with that variegated portion of the sock blank came out just about equal. And you can see that I decided not to go with the contrasting heels and toes on either sock because I actually ended up with enough yarn for both socks without having to use that contrasting uh, heel and toe yarn that I had set aside that didn't quite fit uh, into my plan once I started knitting these socks and found that the length was going to be just right for the foot of the person that I was knitting these socks for. Now I used the country sock pattern by Nancy Bush, uh, mashed up with Susan B. Anderson's How I Knit My Socks. So you'll see that I have a traditional heel flap and gusset and that flat toe that's just kitchenered shut at the end. Uh, and you can see that it's got a kind of quasi faux rib with an interesting stitch uh, all along the main body, main leg of the sock, and then across the top of the foot. Here's a look at the red version of the sock. Same features. And so there you go. That is how to knit symmetrical socks from an asymmetrical sock blank. I'd love to see your projects and hear about the work that you're doing with your sock blanks and your socks and all of your knitting projects. So let me know in the comments how your projects are going. And if you have any tips or tricks for working with asymmetrical sock blanks, please share them here so that we can all learn from each other. Thanks, and I'll see you at the next tutorial.